Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, a channel about making computer role-playing games using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In this video, I would like to introduce the idea of giving special abilities to enemies as well as player characters, and I would like to demonstrate another idea for a special ability, which is Backstab. So here we have a um, fight that's about to start. If we look at the hover text for our player characters, it will all be as before. Um, but if we look at the monsters, we will now see that they have a special ability at the bottom of their stats. They have their, their, uh, their armor class, their attack, their damage, and they have an extra little notation, which is that they have backstab. So let's see what backstab does. So, first of all, we can see, normally it would say enemy one hits Bloody Leaf for however many damage, but now it says enemy one backstabs Bloody Leaf. And we can also see that enemy number one, if we look at the damage, it says that his damage is one to six, um, but he's done 12 damage, which normally he shouldn't be able to do. So, um, obviously, backstab is doing is doing something, is giving them the ability to do extra damage. Um, so let's continue this fight. Um, another one misses. This guy backstabs for eight damage, and once again, um, that was enemy number four, and once again, he has one to six damage, so he's managed to do sort of more damage than should be possible for him. And now, of course, Normally in this situation, um, we would probably run away, um, seeing that two of our people have been killed in one round, um, and that we're taking these huge amounts of damage. But let's just keep keep fighting anyway, so we can see more stuff. Um, so we hit them for one, we hit them for two, so we've wounded them, but hasn't done a lot. And then he gets backstabbed and almost killed. Someone else gets killed, and we have been wiped out. So what Backstab is doing is that it gives you plus four to hit, so it makes it more likely that you will hit your enemy, and it doubles the damage that you do, and that's how, despite saying that they've got one to six damage, that's how they're able to do... 8 damage or 12 damage. Um, that's also why all of their damage is an even number, because it's always a number multiplied by 2, um, a whole number multiplied by 2. But it only works if you outnumber your enemy. So this uh, character, Bloody Leaf, he also has backstab, but he wasn't able to use it because there was always more enemies than there were... Um, player characters and so the idea of that is that if there's more of you you can sort of circle around or you can get behind them or something like that and therefore you can you can have this have this um this attack that's more likely to hit and if it does hit it's more likely to uh, to be a killing blow um and as you can see it's as written it's quite it's quite powerful um so that's what the that's what the idea is. Um, it's taken ultimately from um, the way that thieves or what they're now called rogues work in Dungeons and Dragons. They uh, had an ability called the backstab. It got changed to I think sneak attack. Um, well, it got changed to sneak attack in third edition. I, I think it's still called that in the in the current fifth edition. Um, but in their case, it's in, in the tabletop. Uh, version it's not that you have to have more characters it's just you have to be able to st strike at them un un uh, unseen and unexpected um, or from behind but because this is sort of abstracted there isn't really a get a go behind the enemy move so it's just abstracted to say that you can do it if you're if you've got more, if you've got more um, people on your side, and therefore, if you've got more people on your side, that gives you the ability to sort of um, to get around them. You might, um, if you are adding 
uh, the effects of different environments. You might have this ability only working in a sort of open environment. So if it's in a forest, you can do it. But if you're in a dungeon corridor, you might rule that you can't do it because how are you sneaking past people in a in a you know ten foot wide corridor when everyone's waving weapons around? Well, you might say that that's implausible, and so therefore it would only work. Or in an alley or something, or a city street, it might not work. Um, but in a forest or in a desert or something like that, it, it you might say that it might. Um, but as usual, I've done the simple version, which is just that you know there is no environment and it works wherever, um, and you can uh, add ideas to it um, as you choose. So let's have a look at how it is coded. Oops. Okay, so first of all, um, I mean, this is fairly obvious, but in the previous video, we only had um, we gave um, we gave skills to the player characters, which is what ha what's happening here, and then we had um, we didn't do anything for the for the um, for the enemies. If we're going to give enemies the possibility of having skills, well, obviously we're going to need to define which skills they have. So we've got this for loop, which just gives all of them um, zero zero one. In other words, they don't have critical hit, they don't have smoke bombs, but they do have backstab. Um, that's that's fairly obvious, but worth pointing out. Um, similarly, in the hover text. Um, which is called from this display page. We now, um, there used to be a thing here which said if AT is equal to zero, then, oh, sorry, so it used to be like this, this would all be indented, one one indentation more. If, 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 uh, if the uh, if AT is equal to zero, which means if the player characters are attacking, then um, go through all the skills, and if they have a particular skill, add the name of that skill to the hover text for that picture. Well, obviously, now we need to do that for the monsters as well. So, oops. Anyway, oops. Oh, can't can't get anything right. So we've just removed we've just removed that um, that requirement for AT to be zero. Um, those are both fairly straightforward, and again, I'd have to indent all of these one fewer. So those two are obvious, um, but let's look at some stuff that's less than obvious. The rest of the um, the coding, the actual coding of of the strike, um, takes place. On this page, strike. Um, so we have this new variable, um, BS, which of course stands for backstab. We do have a little note here in the in an initialize, which is dollars BS. It's a flag. It's set to one if the current attacker has the backstab skill. That's actually a slight mistake. It's set to one if the current attacker has the backstab skill and can use it um, and is alive. Um, so that note isn't quite right. Um, but let's see how it, how how it works. We have uh, BS equal to zero, and then we ask. So if dollars SK square bracket dollars AT n square bracket square bracket dollars CA n square bracket square bracket three n square bracket is equal to one. So AT is the side that's currently attacking, CA is the number of the current attacker within their side, and 3 is the number for backstab. You will, rem you will remember from the previous video that SK is a three-dimensional array, um, the side, the number within the side, and the number of the skill, and it's equal to 1 if that particular character has that particular skill. So this basically says, does the current character have the backstab skill? And if so, they might be able to be able to use it. Now, 
we've already determined what by the time we get to strike we've already determined that this character is alive and has an attack um, we do that in, pre in previous screens we skip past characters that that have no hit point or that whose hit points have fallen below one and have therefore died so here's what we do now at the moment we have two variables for the numbers we have dollars c and dollars e dollars c being the number of player characters and dollars e being the number of enemies it would probably be um, sort of more consistent to have an array and then have slot zero in the array be the number of player characters and slot one be the number of enemies but that isn't how I did it um, and so this is um, slightly more clunky than it, than it, than it could be. Um, normally what I'd have here is um, x would be set to uh, that variable with the slot at and the other one would be set to the variable with the slot de but anyway so if the attacker is equal to zero in other words if the player characters are attacking then x is equal to c and y is equal to e and if at is not equal to zero which means the monsters or the enemies are attacking then x is equal to e and y is equal to c in other words x is set to be equal to the number of characters in the attacking side and y is set to be equal to the number of characters in the defending side um, and that would be easy you could do that in one line and rather than this quite complicated structure if I, if instead of dollars c and dollars e I had uh, I had an array with with two two values in it but anyway that's how I did it so we've got x the number of attackers and y the number of defenders and we set v equal to zero now v is going to be um, positive if the attacking side outnumbers the defending side and it's going to be negative if the opposite is the case and it's going to be zero if the two sides are equally matched so let's see how we do that well we have x and we have y so we say for w we have another for loop or rather we have the first sorry this is the first for loop in this bit of code we have a for loop which is for w equals one w is under or equal to x so it's under or equal to the number of attacking characters and it increments by one each time if the hit points of character number or character the, the um the slot of the h array which is dollars at dollars w in other words the attacking side and just the number that we're looking at if that's over zero then add one to v and go and then we have just have slash if and slash four so what that means is go through all of the values between one and x x is the number of characters in the attacking side and this in this case this includes the number that are dead it's the number that entered the combat and if look at each one's hit points if their hit points are more than zero then add one to v so in other words at the end of this v will be equal to the number of characters on the attacking side who are alive and then we need to do the sort of the opposite for the defending side we have the same for loop except instead of w is under or equal to x it's w is under or equal to y we look at and instead of the slot the uh, slot in the h array which is dollars at dollars w it's dollars de dollars w and if that particular slot is over zero that indicates that that character is still alive and we reduce v by one so as a result of all of that if there are more attackers than defenders then v will end up a positive and if there are fewer attackers than defenders it'll be negative and if they're equal it'll be zero so if v is greater than zero then we set dollars bs to be equal to one so in other words what this code does is find out this code finds out the number of attackers uh, the number of attackers who entered the combat and the number of defenders who entered the combat but we can't just use those figures because some of them might have died during the combat so go through 
um, set a variable to zero and then go through each attacker, adding one to that variable for each one of them who turns out to be alive, and then go through all the defenders and take one away from the variable from each one for each one who turns out to be alive. And then at the end, if you've got a positive number, that means that the attackers outnumber the defenders, and therefore um, we can set BS to one, and that, in other words, we can this particular character can backstab. So we uh, make the um, the attack roll, and before we had if f equal, we didn't have this before. We had if f oh, sorry we have if f is equal to one, then add four to y. That's a bonus that the monsters get when the player characters are fleeing. But now it says if f is equal to one or dollars bs is equal to one. In other words, if the if this is the monsters attack and they're attacking fleeing player characters, then they get plus four. And if um, or if a character is backstabbing, that character also gets a plus four. Um, so they don't stack. Um, what stacking means is that um, in, in gaming, when you talk about, or at least in tabletop role playing, when you talk about two bonuses stacking, it means you can have both the bonuses. If the bonus is stacked, that would mean that if they were fleeing and you had backstab, you'd get plus eight. But that's not how it works. You get plus four if they're fleeing, you get plus four if you can backstab, but you don't get plus eight if they, if both are the case. You, you, you still just get plus four. You can only get this bonus once. Um, just because I thought having plus eight to hit would be, because you're rolling a 20-sided a, a dice, um, plus eight is almost a sort of guaranteed hit, and it would make running away from someone who can backstab um, basically a death sentence. So... That's why I did it that way. If I wanted to have it so that they did stack, I would say if f equals 1, set y equals y plus 4, and then I have a separate one which says if bs is equal to 1, set y equals y plus 4. Oops. Like that. So that, that would be the way to do it um, so that they do stack. But as we've decided they don't, do it that way. Now, um, the only other code we need is that if you do hit with, with a backstab, you get double damage. Um, so we, all, we already have this set x equals um, a random number between 1 and the maximum damage that this character can do. And then we just say if bs is equal to 1, then set x equals x times 2. In other words, you get double damage for a successful backstab. So if the characters are fleeing, and you have backstab, you won't get an extra number to hit, but you will do that double damage. And you might say logically, well, shouldn't logically shouldn't everyone do double damage against a fleeing enemy if the reason for the double damage is that you're hitting them in the back? Well, you know, maybe, but let's say that backstab involves some sort of special training where they know to go for the neck or they know how to they know how to hit sort of special, you know, uh, pressure points or something. Um, the practical reason is again probably double damage would be would be f a bit fatal. Um, so I've set it up that only the double damage is only for um, people with the backstab skill. And the only other thing we need to do is to change the message, and we do that down here, where it says if if dollars BS is equal to one, then um, we look at the variable dollars m, which is the message that we're going to um, print, and we set m, set dollars m equals dollars m dot replace, bracket, quote, hits, quote, comma, quote, backstabs, quote, in bracket. In other words, go through the variable m, and every time you see the text h-i-t-s, change it for the text B A C K S T A B S. So instead of saying enemy three, or uh, let's say Blackleaf hits enemy three for four damage, it will be 
Blackleaf backstabs enemy 3 for 4 damage. And that is all that we need to do, and that makes backstab um, that makes backstab work. Um, as with uh, every other example that I'm doing in this series, I've done a very basic sort of version of it. There aren't any situational sort of modifiers. There isn't any, I said before about terrain, if you wanted to be really realistic, you might want to say that it only works in particular environments. Um, you could also have other restrictions like it only works in the first round or something, and then after that, the enemies, you might decide that after that, the enemies sort of realise that you've gotten behind them and they and they kind of they kind of close up and so you you might set it up that it can only work once um, but you know I haven't I haven't done any of those um, you know any of those any of those complications I sort of leave it to you because it depends on um, the way you want to the way you want to set your game up um, you could also make the bonus less doubling damage can be quite you know quite severe you could have no uh, bonus damage, you could just have the, the bonus to hit, um, or you could have a much smaller damage, you could just say that it's like plus two damage or something like that. But uh, anyway, there it is, and I hope that was useful or interesting to at least some of you, and I hope you will tune in next time. <laughs>